Is this? Oh, sure. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Oh, there's, that's better. Um, yeah, so once again, my name is Gerard O'Neill. Uh, and I'm here to ask all of you to put some respect on my name. If you're not aware of the meme, you can look it up. It's funny. Um, but yeah, the reason I'm up here is I've got an apostrophe in my last name. And it causes a whole wide range of issues, both in the digital world and in the physical world. And the root cause of all these issues is programmers, such as yourselves. And so I feel like it's my duty to come up here and educate people on all the things that can go wrong with names, uh, because there are a lot of them, uh, but they really don't need to exist. Uh, so I'm going to be talking to you about validation of names, the sanitization and rendering of names, manual entry of names, and solutions to problems caused by all of the above. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about validation. Programmers are always told to never trust user input, right? And this is sound advice. But the problem is when programmers decide to try to implement stuff to make sure that a name is a valid name, right? So they'll have you do things like separate your first, middle, and last name. They'll, which by the way, is not a legal requirement. If, if you're aware of uh, the magical duo Penn and Teller, Teller's name is just Teller. Like that's his legal name. So it's not a, it's not a legal requirement. Um, a lot of people, say you can't have numbers in your name, right? Also not a legal requirement in the entirety of the world. Uh, there's actually a guy in the UK who named himself Mr. PlayStation 2. It's his legal name. So this is not a requirement everywhere. A through Z only, obviously that's not a requirement in probably most of the world actually. Uh, it has to be a certain number of characters, either short or long, which is a problem if you have a really short name or a really long name, right? So these are all things that don't actually exist. But a lot of programmers program these into their forms, and they impose these rules on your name, even though they shouldn't. Here's a bunch of forms that tell me that my, last, or my name is invalid, or my last name's invalid, whatever. And it's all because of the apostrophe. If I remove the apostrophe, I can get through the form every single time. Here's a bunch of real world examples, like physical world kind of stuff. My driver's license and social security card, they don't have the apostrophe, but my birth certificate does. I don't know which one is my legal name, but <laughs> my father, it's very interesting, he, his social security card has the apostrophe in it, mine doesn't, and it's because his was written on a typewriter. So again, this is a problem with programmers, right? This is not a problem with the apostrophe itself. I actually called up the social security department after I got my card replaced, because my parents lost it, and I told them, hey, there's an apostrophe on my name. Can we add that? I, I got, a, there's a mistake on this. And I was told, we don't do the apostrophe. So <laughs> I guess uh, I'm stuck with this for the rest of my life, um, which sucks. My LA voter registration is another funny one. You know those little boxes, like on forms that you have to fill in? Uh, you have to put your name, like one letter per box. So I always rebel against those, and I put an apostrophe in one of them. And usually, whoever is typing them into the computer just ignores that. But in LA's case, they actually replaced it with a space. So now whenever I go to vote, my name is at the very top of the list. And I, they ask me, hey, what's your name? I say, Gerard O'Neill. And there's a space after the O, and that makes my name go all the way to the top of the O's, so you have to go there to find my name. Invariably, they ignore that, and they go straight to the O'Neills, or the, the O-whatevers, and they find the only other O'Neill in my area, and they say, is your name Charles? No, my name is not Charles. There's an, a space after the O. I have to explain it like two or three times before they can finally get it. And now I vote by mail. I highly recommend it. It's a very much better experience. I have a friend from high school whose first name is just the letter K, because again, there are no legal requirements that it has to be a certain length. Payment processors such as Braintree, owners of PayPal and Venmo, right? I think that's right. They require you to have two or more characters in your first name. So the e-commerce world is basically non-existent to her. She can't buy things online. In order to book flights, she has to call up the airline and book flights that way because she can't purchase it online. And oftentimes, she'll have to explain her whole situation to the representative. Then they have to escalate the call to a manager to waive the booking fee that you get charged if you book it through the phone. This is every single time that she books a flight. Horrible experience, right? Don't do this. 
Uh, people have, with hyphenated names also have problems with airports. I think there's a, an article on Mashable that talks about this. I'm actually featured in it, a shameless plug. But yeah, you can look this up. Basically, if you have a hyphenated name, airlines hate you. There's also a guy whose last name is Noel. <laughs> and Wired wrote an article about him. I feel horrible for this guy. And you can, like, you already know all the problems, right? I highly recommend that article about him. It's on Wired. It's great. And I'll finish off validation by talking about a story of mine. Basically, I quit my first job because of my last name. When I was at Rutgers University over in New Brunswick, New Jersey, I applied for this job. It was basically like a tech support job. So uh, it was students taking on jobs to help other students with their computers. And I was like, whatever, I'll do this. I'm good with computers. I need some money, right? So I applied. I got the job. And Rutgers, long story short, has two databases, one for the employees and one for the students. And it gets synced one way. So if you exist in the employee database, then your name gets put in the student database. The requirement for the employee database was that it had, your name had to match your social security card. Now remember, I don't have an apostrophe in my social security card. So basically, the employee database couldn't have the apostrophe. My name got synced to the student database dropped the apostrophe, and now every single piece of software I used at school and all of my professor's rosters had my name spelled incorrectly. They dropped the apostrophe and lowercase to the N because of me getting a job at the school. So I contacted the people in charge, and I was like, hey, please fix this. They said, sorry, we can't. And I was like, no, I'm a computer science major. I know you can fix this. <laughs> and they're like, again, sorry, there's nothing we can do. So I said, OK, then I quit. And I hadn't even started the job yet, but I refused to work for them because they wouldn't fix my name. And I spent the next two years emailing a bunch of people to try to fix this problem. And sure enough, my diploma had the apostrophe on it after all my hard work. And I didn't need that job. Look where I am now, right? <laughs> so now let's talk about sanitization and rendering of names. So once again, programmers are told never trust user input, right? Sound advice. So they start sanitizing data. They'll replace eight, uh, certain characters with their HTML entities. So my name becomes O ampersand pound sign 39 semicolon Neil. And that's fine. They'll also escape characters. So there's a backslash before my apostrophe as well. And these are fairly innocuous, right? You can reverse this. The problem is sometimes people will sanitize in other ways, like they'll drop non-English letters. So if you've got an accent mark, in your, accent mark in your name, then that letter will just disappear and your name is now different. Another thing that they'll do is they'll try to capitalize names. And in my case, that actually uncapitalizes it because oftentimes these functions that capitalize strings, they'll capitalize the first letter and lowercase the rest of it. So if, if you've got a name like O'Neill or McGuire, it gets all messed up. And then if you've got a name with a lowercase first letter, like in a lot of Italian and Spanish names, then it'll uppercase that. So now your name is wrong in the other direction, right? Not a great experience. Here's a bunch of examples of my name being, I, I see the sanitized version of my name. So you can see backslashes. You can see ampersand, pound sign, 39 semicolon. I'm very used to seeing that. That's the most common one. My favorite from this slide, though, is this one right here. This is United Airlines. They took my middle initial, they lowercased it, added it to my first name, removed my apostrophe, and lowercased to the N all at once. So my name is just completely wrong. And this is every time I book with United. It's, it's hilarious. My favorite example ever, though, is the time I was asked to leave a review on OpenTable, and I crashed it. And it was, it was literally, you can see right here, it says detected a potentially dangerous input value. And they show me Gerard, O ampersand pound sign 39 semicolon Neil. And so that's the reason. It was my semicolon, or my apostrophe, sorry. And it's funny because if you think about it, if you leave a review, oftentimes, especially in the English language, we, we, we contract words or we have possess, possessive nouns and whatnot. And so it's OK to have an apostrophe in the review, but in your name, it's treated differently. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Last, I want to talk about manual entry of names. So I have no idea why companies include this in their processes, but here are two examples. I've got a check, checking account with uh, Charles Schwab, 
and my checkbook has a double quote instead of an apostrophe. <laughs> and I know I didn't type this because my debit card has the apostrophe in it. So somebody typed this, and I'm pretty sure what they did, if you notice that all of the letters in my name are capitalized, this is block lettering, right? They probably have someone who held down the shift key <laughs> and typed each individual letter, and when they got to the apostrophe, they didn't let go of shift, and now it's a double quote. And so that's what shows up on my, my checkbook. I don't think anyone's noticed it hasn't been a problem, but if it does, I'll be very upset. <laughs> my former healthcare provider at La or Aetna, they gave me an insurance card with an apostrophe in the first one, and then I added my wife to the insurance, and they removed the apostrophe. I have to imagine that somebody actually typed this. Otherwise, why would that happen, right? One silver lining here, though, is I get lots of like junk mail, like in, in the snail mail, my mailbox. And almost all of my spam mail has my name spelled with the lowercase n and the i before the e. So I know somebody typed that. I didn't type that because that's ridiculous. And so I can just throw away that mail immediately because I know that I didn't sign up for it. It's great. But other than that, manual entry is no good. There are times, however, that it's unavoidable. And I don't want to point names or point fingers at anyone, but my name is misspelled here. There are two L's instead of one. So if you do need to resort to manual entry, I would recommend just copy pasting it from, uh, from the canonical source. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, solutions to a bunch of problems. <laughs> um, so someone might be wondering, how do you make sure a name is valid? Basically, this is the algorithm. You determine if the string is greater than zero characters. That's about all you can do. This is a fake name, or at least I hope it's a fake name. I hope nobody has this name. And this would pass basically every form's validations, right? It's got a first name, it's got a last name. There are no numbers. It's only A through Z, and it's not too long, and it's not too short. I often type herp derp as my name in forms that I don't want to put my actual name. And it's never failed validation. It's always a valid name. But when I type my actual name into a form, I want to say at least 20 to 30% of the time I'm told that it's invalid. So it's not, not a good thing. Basically, you can't make sure a name is valid, so don't even try. That's, that's my advice. What if a user doesn't capitalize their own name? I assure you, if you let them change it and they want to see it capitalized, then they will change it. Um, if, if you're like, no, I, I can't accept that for whatever reason, um, what I would say is basically try to implement some sort of smart capitalization algorithm. So basically, the idea is that if a name already has capital letters in it, then leave it alone. If it doesn't, then you can run your rudimentary capitalization function from Ruby or whatever it is. This isn't going to be perfect 100% of the time. Again, I think you should just leave the names alone. But if you absolutely have to do this, you can do that. But don't try to capitalize my name. It's, it's already capitalized, I promise. If you are going to ignore my advice and you want to do this anyway, I wrote a library to do it. It's called <laughs> Smart Capitalize. So you can install it with Yarn or NPM. It's written in TypeScript. It's great. But don't use it, please. Just Leave the names alone. What if you're a cool startup and you want to say, hey, Gerard, instead of hi, Gerard O'Neill in your emails, right? So you're like, because of that, I have to separate first and last name. I would say, I don't have the numbers, but I don't think anybody cares. I don't get offended when I see my last name, unless it's got the ampersand pound sign 39 semicolon in it. Then don't, don't show me that. But, but I think you should just, if, if you don't require, like in your business logic, the first name and last name to be separate, please don't separate them. There's, there's really no reason. It's fine. Um, and it, it causes problems for people who don't have one of them. <laughs> or some people have multiple of them. I do sympathize, though, if you have like a third party partner or library or whatever, and they impose these restrictions on you, then I can understand needing to impose that on the users, right? What I would say in a situation like this is to, in your database, have two, two fields. Basically, the, the good name and then the sanitized version of the name. So in my case, the, the name field would have the apostrophe and the sanitized one wouldn't. And you can show your party, your, your, your third partner, third party partner, sorry, the crappy one and show me the good one that I actually like. If you're afraid of doing this conversion yourself, which you should be, because you're going to mess up, 
what you can do is basically just ask the user to do it. So you have two options in this scenario, right? You can either ask the user, like, hey, I've got this crappy partner, and they're not going to let me send, you, send them your name spelled this way. Can you spell it the way you would if I told you your name was invalid? I don't know the correct, <laughs> like, the words to, to describe that. Get a copywriter. I don't know. But, but this is a better experience, in my opinion. Someone is probably thinking, that's a horrible experience. Look at all the words they need to read. I assure you, as someone who goes through this all the time, I would rather see this than invalid name. So try to do something like this. I've never seen it, but I would love if somebody did this. I'd be so happy. But I'd be even happier if you just didn't validate names at all. What about Bobby drops tables, drop Bobby tables, whatever you want to call them? Use prepared statements in your SQL databases. You're probably already doing this. It's 2019. Please use those. Um, of course, you can always sanitize your data. I have no problem with that. But just make sure you're never displaying that sanitized data to the user. I hate seeing O ampersand pound sign 39 semicolon Neil all the time. It's so common. You have no idea. <laughs> what if you're using Python 2? There are people with Unicode characters in their name, and it's just going to mess up all your code. I would recommend, strongly recommend, that you quit your job if you're using Python 2. <laughs> and the alternative to that is to really push for an upgrade, because it's been 11 years since Python 3 was released. This shouldn't be a problem anymore. Anything else? Yes. Put RSpec on my name. So basically, if you're writing any logic around names, which you should not be, I, if, if there's one thing to stress, don't treat names special. But if you do, write tests and include short names and long names and names with special characters and names in Chinese and Hindi and Korean and Russian, basically Arabic, every single language that doesn't have a Latin alphabet or even you know, accent marks. Just throw tons of names at whatever logic you're going to use for names, which you should not be right. Just don't do it. But if you do, write tests for it. And I'm going to finish off by just saying you can't make any assumptions about names. Like, like we said, you know, there are just different laws in all parts of the world. Even within the United States, there are different laws for different uh, states. Just you can't make assumptions about names. Anything that you do or any, any assumptions you make about names is going to be wrong for some subset of the population somewhere. So just don't even try. Treat names like you would treat any other string, like a title like a description, like a bio, because the name is just a string. There's nothing special about them, so don't treat them special. And you'll be fine like 99% of the time. That's all I've got. My name is Gerard O'Neill. Thank you for listening. <laughs>